Father, I'm always amazed. That when Jesus took that cup under the old covenant, he looked ahead to us in the 21st century when he said, this is my blood of the new covenant. Do this in remembrance of me. And so we have. And what an honor, Father. What an honor. What an honor bestowed to your son in this day, in this room. In Jesus' name, amen. If you will turn your Bibles now to 1 Kings. I guess there, maybe you're still in Genesis. Let's go to 1 Kings 18. Look at verse 41. We're dealing with the life of Elijah in one section of his life during the reign of King Ahab because it was so important. Verse 41. Now Elijah said to Ahab, Go up, eat and drink, for there is the sound of the roar of a heavy shower. I think maybe the King James said abundant shower. The Hebrew word is used mighty, described as heavy. People would say a heavy downpour. You ever heard people say that? It's a heavy downpour. It's, it's raining cats and dogs. For there was the sound of the roar of a heavy shower, a mighty rain, a, a sound of a roar. Isn't it interesting how he said that? I mean, a roar is a roar, right? But when he says the sound of a roar, it's specific, isn't it? He's asking, there are a lot of sounds. I want you to listen for the sound of, the, of a specific roar. I find that to be interesting, of a heavy shower. So Ahab went up to eat and drink, but Elijah went up to the top of Carmel, and he crouched down on the earth and put his face between his knees. I don't know the last time you've done that. My grandson was over to my house the other day. He was in eighth grade in 6'1". Skinny as a pole. He's what we used to call a bean pole. We're, we try to put meat on him, but... It'll come probably when he's 50. And I was telling him, I was, he was sitting on the couch. He put his head between his legs nearly to his ankles. I watched that for a little bit, and I thought, holy cow. I was sitting on the other couch. I thought I might give that a whirl. If I'd have got as far as he went, you'd have took me to the hospital. Go home and try it tonight. I said to him, I want you to remember Sunday when I preached this sermon, son. That is the position that Elijah prayed in. Watch this again. Go home and try this prayer system. You will love laying on the bed praying. I mean, he put his face between his knees. Now, I don't know anybody could drop it all the way to their ankles except Jacob, what I watched him do. He said to his servant, he had a servant, he said to his servant, go up now, look towards the sea. That's the Mediterranean. What is interesting, where they are in Mark Carmel, if you, go to, if you go to Zarephath and stay on the coastline, you go down 40 miles, you're to Mount Carmel. Just go down the coastline of the Mediterranean Sea, go down 40 miles, you're at Mount Carmel. 
Where was he? Where was he when he left to go to Mark Carmel? Zarephath. He said, look towards the sea. So the servant went up and looked, and he said, there's nothing. He said, go back, and he said it seven times. He sent a servant back seven times. What do you see? Nothing. Go back. What do you see? Nothing. And what was he doing? What was, what was Elijah doing all this time? Where was, his, where was his face? Try that. You will want that servant to be faster than he is. <laughs> <laughs> that's like the guy in the gym with all the weight he can lift and he says uh, go, go at seven uh, you want him to get pretty get back here and anyhow so he, there is nothing he said go back and, he, and, he's, and, and it, 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 this went on seven times and it came about at the seventh time that he said whoa a cloud as small as a man's hand is coming up from the sea Actually, he said, behold. But and Elijah said, go up and say to Ahab, prepare your chariot, go down, so that the heavy showers does not stop you. That's how bad they were going to be. The flooding. It was going to result in a lot of flooding. So it came about. In a little while. You, you know what that means? In a little while. When you hear the weather people talking about it and said, well, that, that, that shower was moving pretty good and it just stalled and it's just dropping. Right? Right? It's moving so slow, and look, it, it's not even moving anymore. And it's just, you, you know, you're going to get a good soaking, don't you? That's where flooding comes from. That's what we're talking about. It's moving, it's moving, it's moving, and, th and then all of a sudden it gets to Mount Carmel, and it, it's slowed down. It's dropping <laughs> It's dropping at Mount Carmel. It's dropping... Cats and dogs. Cats do what? Poodle. <laughs> Horton stepped into it. That wouldn't be the first time, would Horton? No. So it came about in a little while that the sky grew dark, clouds and wind, and there was a heavy shower. And Ahab rode and went to Jezreel. Jezreel. Then the hand of the Lord, and this, this is going to lead to verse, this is a, a link to chapter 19. Then the hand of the Lord was on Elijah. He girded up his loins and he out. <laughs> and he outran Ahab to Jezreel. You're talking about 20 miles. 18 to 20 miles, outran a chariot. He outran the king's chariot. Now, you know the king's chariot's got a fast one. He, he's not going to drive it. He's not going to have it. The king's going to have it. Right? No. <laughs> yeah. But he outran him. He outran him. I just find that well, that kind of sets up chapter 19. So let, let's get to our study this morning. Today's lesson introduces a second miracle by the Lord God of Israel at Mount Carmel. King Ahab and Elijah had returned from the brook to the top of the mountain or up into the mountain of Mount Carmel for different reasons, the Bible tells us. Ahab returned to eat and drink and... <laughs> I'm just thinking out loud here. And, and maybe <laughs> how to tell Jezebel about what happened to all of her prophets <laughs> before returning home 
because mama's not going to be happy. <laughs> I don't know anything about Ahab, but he's married hell on wheels. I'm just thinking. He's got a lot to have to explain how he lost 850 of her prophets. Elijah returned to the top of Mount Carmel to pray. Regard God, God sending the rain after three and a half years of drought. You should now go back, not now, but write this on your piece of paper. I, f I failed to do that for you, so I'm going to tell you, write down James 5, 17 through 18. Because it talks about Elijah prayed for the drought, and he prayed again for the rain. And, this, and we've been studying this whole thing. That's chapter 17 and 18. Two verses picked up what I've been, I've got 13 lessons, what two little verses picked up. You want, you want to see that? Because listen, not only was Elijah a man of the word, but he was a man of prayer. And what the New Testament talks about, James talks about him being a man of prayer. I was intrigued that he could pray with his head between his legs. What is about to happen at Mount Carmel will bring closure to the drought, to the priest nation of Israel, and open the door of divine blessings, showers of blessings. How long the showers of blessings will last will be determined by positive volition versus negative volition of the Israelites. However, this is the second miracle at Mount Carmel on the same day. Divine blessings didn't come because the prophets were killed. It came because the only, the one and only Lord God of Israel sent the fire from heaven and set fire to the burnt offering, which was shadow Christology of the cross of Christ. You can read this in 1 Corinthians 5, 7. The lamb, the Passover lamb, and Hebrews, the 8th chapter, Ninth and 10th, focused on the 10th chapter, verses 1 and 2. This great win at Mount Carmel showed that the Lord God of Israel is greater and more worthy of worship as the only one true God. Once again, to make the point, God closed the drought and he opened the blessings of God's mercy, love, and grace by sending a heavy, mighty, abundant showers of rain. And he's going to send so much that it's going to, it's going to bring the water level up quickly for harvest. Our lesson today is going to cover three aspects of this heavy shower at Mark Carmel, a second miracle. Two great miracles at Mark Carmel were signs to the priest nation of Israel. 1 Corinthians 1.22, For indeed Jews ask. A lot of times we quote that and we don't quote it correctly. Jews ask for signs. Greeks or Gentiles search for wisdom. They're not the same thing. Sometimes we don't pay attention to what the Word tells us close enough. 1 Corinthians 14, chapter 21, 22 talks about this in regard to tongues as the gift. Heavy showers was a sign, therefore, that the drought was removed because it had served its purpose in bringing a spiritual awakeness to Israel to sense a need for spiritual reform. God wants idolatry removed from Israel and a return to the worship of the one and only true Lord God of Israel. At the same time in this reformation, he also wants a reuniting of the two kingdoms into one, the purpose of the 12 stones of the burnt offering. 
Today's lesson brings us the second miracle from the Lord God of Israel as a sign at Mount Carmel. It was a sign that the winner takes all. Sometimes we don't pay attention to the importance of geographical will of God that's associated with the directive will because the directive will takes up so much oxygen from the room and rightly said. But the geographical will of God in your life connected with, to the directive will of God is enormously important. For example, for example, point number two, remember that the directive will of God always has a geographical will, a mental will, and an operational will associated with the directive will. Remember also it's associated with the permissive will and the overruling will. Those, those three categories always have these three things attached to it. It will, it will advance your study and it will cause you to see more than you normally see by knowing this in the scriptures. To bring this point today to you, there are, were four geographical locations that were important to the directive will of God, removing the drought and sending the mighty showers of divine blessings. Zarephath, that's where Elijah was when God gave him a new assignment, Mount Carmel. Mount Carmel was where the assignment was. The Mediterranean Sea is from which the heavy rain was coming from with a strong wind driving it. And Jezreel is where they're fleeing to. Which takes us to chapter 19. See, sometimes we don't realize how significantly important the geographical will of God is. And its importance is to the directive will of God, to the man of God. And however that is broken down into our daily living. You've really got to get this. Mount Carmel was an important high point location in the coastal mountain range. There was a coastal mountain range that ran from Mount Carmel all the way to the Mediterranean Sea. What made Mount Carmel so important in this mountain range was its height, how it peaked. Where, is, where Elijah was in prayer, he went to the top of the mountain. And you had a panoramic view. What did he tell him to look for? And where did he say it was going to come from? The Mediterranean Sea. He had a view to the coastline of the Mediterranean Sea from there. It's just kind of unique. The geographics is very important in the will of God. The, the importance of it. Mount Carmel had become, by Elijah's time, Mount Carmel had become a historic sacred mountain because of its panoramic view and its significance in the region. It had become a sacred mountain for the ancient Phele cult of, of Baal worshippers. It was their mountain of Mega. Mecca. It was the Mecca mountain for them. Elijah was familiar with its history as well as having spent time with the widow of Zarephath who was a witch of necromancy in this religion, if you recall. When Elijah left, he left to begin another ministry that would take him to Mount Carmel, the sacred mountain some 40 miles from Zarephath. When he left the widow for this ministry, he left an ambassador for Christ. Rather than a witch of Baal. You can read about it in 1 Kings 17, 24. And you should read about, about it in 2 Corinthians 5, 17, 21 for your life and mine. Point number three, before going to the top of Mount Carmel to await a second miracle from the Lord God of Israel, 
Elijah told Ahab, if you recall, to listen for a sound of the roar of a mighty, heavy, abundant shower <laughs> that was coming to Mount Carmel. Isn't that interesting? Listen to me. Listen. Jesus says, he who has ears, let him what? Spell hear in your mind. Not verbally. Spell it in your mind. Have you got it? Spell, spell it. H-E-A-R, right? Here. If you take the H off, what have you got? Can you remember that? God gave you ears for what? To hear and to hear the things of God. He who has an ear, let him hear the th what God is saying to him. Let him hear the things that God is saying to him. Let him hear. Don't let it pass through one ear and out the other. You got two ears. It's not to pass it out. It's to stop it in between. He says to Ahab, listen for the sound of the roar of a heavy rain. Now, they ain't had heavy rain. They haven't had any rain for three and a half years. Listen, listen. Before, listen, he says to him, I want you to hear the sound of a roar of heavy showers. Let this be a normal idea. The two guys up there on the mountain, and Ahab, Ahab's down there eating, celebrating, trying to figure out how he's going to tell mama. And Elijah says, well, I'll, be, I'll see you in a little while. Where are you going? I'm going up to the top of the mountain. Why are you going up there? Pray. What are you going to pray for? Well, listen. For the sound of a roar of a great, mighty, powerful rain coming. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, just climb up there, old man. Get on top of that mountain and pray with you. I don't know. Where's, where's Elijah going? Ah, he's going up on the top of the mountain to pray. What's he going to pray about? Ah, he says he's going to pray. We're, God's going to remove the drought, and he's going to give us a heavy, mighty, powerful rain. Where's that going to come from? <laughs> I don't know. Hey, the old fool. What's he know? He's not current and updated like we are. Elijah says, Listen for the sound of the roar. <laughs> These showers of divine blessings will be so great that they will cover neighboring nations such as the Phoenicians, the city of Zarephath, the city of Sidon. A Listen, the widow who is now a believer and has a newfound faith in God in Christ will experience blessings by association. Hello, church. As a new believer, she's going to hear that sound coming off that Mediterranean, that Mediterranean sea. She's going to hear that sound, and that wind driving and that roar of that wind, it's going to cover all of that sound system in there. And, a, and when that hits Mount Carmel, directly 40 miles away, it's going to hit her city, Zarephath. And she's going to do a, a rain dance for Jesus Christ. <laughs> what a wonderful story. What a wonderful story in regarding to the widow of Zarephath. I got a book in that in my heart. Blessings by association. There's one woman from the religion of, of Baal. Here's another one at Jareel, Jezebel. And the sound of the roar of divine blessings is going to be the sound of divine wrath because of volition. What 
What a sad story for her life. Now the issue will be, how will the Israelites respond to God's will? Will they go back to the new norm of idolatry, or will they return to the old norm of the worship of the true and only God of Israel through Christ? We know from history what the answer is and how sad that's going to be. They got a great spiritual awakening, knew it was a spiritual awakening, saw God do two great miracles on Mount Carmel and blew it off. What a sad day for America. If we don't learn, if we don't awaken to a spiritual awakening during this virus and, and realize where God is trying to take us in reformation. And you know who he, he's after? He's after the church to get right so that they can reach a, a people that need Christ. You know, when I see all this rioting and burning and looting, you know what I see? I see people that need Christ. That's what I see. I could have, listen, I could have well been one of those people. If you don't think you could have, you could have easily been caught up into that goofiness. Did you go to college? Was you part of the keg group? Keg group. Well, I hope you're not. I went to college as an unbeliever to get a little education and get a whole lot of fun. Will they return to the carnal life of normal idolatry even after hearing the sound and the reality of the heaven showers, will they see it as just more trouble to deal with? Now we, look, now we had a drought. Now we got a flood. Now we got to deal with more water. Why can't he just give me a half a cup? I don't need three cups of water. I just need a half a cup of water. I just need a little water for the grass. That's all I need, just a little water. Listen, we're so unsettled. Either, either God don't give us enough or he gives us too much. Both arguments are wrong. He gives you what your need is. And when he gives you more than your need, it's to give it to other people who don't have the need, who, who don't have the ability to meet the need they have. Tell me you know that. Apparently not. Will they hear the sound of a fresh new day of spiritual opportunity from God's amazing grace? When they hear the sound of the roar that God has removed the drought and is re returning their nation and he's going to pour heavy rain to bring the rain, uh, what do they call that, the rain water level, to bring the water level so that you can do harvesting. We're never satisfied, are we? We're never satisfied unless you come to, the, to, come to understand grace. Once you understand grace, your, your life settles down and you're content. You'll never be content without grace. The law will never get, make you content. The law, it'll make you a nervous wreck. The law, heebie-jeebies. You'll have the heebie-jeebies all the time. Did they have a spiritual awakening during the three and a half years of drought to recognize the spiritual importance of the sound of the roar of the rain coming, divine blessings, and the sight of the sign of the heavy showers? Would they see it as a positive or a negative? Look toward the Mediterranean Sea. What do you see? Nothing. Look again. Nothing. Look Again, nothing. Look again, nothing. Look again, nothing. Look again, nothing. Seventh time? The seventh times of what? Charm. I mean, how many times you look? Oh, it's not there. Go back. No. About the fifth time we'd give up, wouldn't we? We're Americans. About the third time.
Go back, go back, go back. God said he was going to do it. He'll do it. Go back until it's done. Never leave God. Never leave his promise until you have it. Because God is faithful. Romans 4.21, what he's promised, he'll give it to you. Behold, I see a cloud as small as a man's hand coming from the Mediterranean Sea. I see the sky growing dark black and strong winds and heavy rain. Go tell Ahab. Go tell it on the mountain. Go tell it on the mountain. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we're so thankful today for these who have come our way by the automobile and the internet. I mean, how many miracles do we have to see? How many miracles do we have to hear? How many witness? How many miracles do we have to witness from the hand of God to our life personally for us not to know that you're the awesome, mighty God? We want you in charge of our life. We're, we're, we're at risk every time we put it in our hands. That's why we're to walk by faith and not by sight. We're to walk in the spirit and not by flesh. We're to walk in the power of the new man and not the weakness of the old man. Oh, God, will we ever learn? Will we ever learn? Will we ever learn? But here's another story, fathers, for us to study and learn from. In Jesus' name, amen.